Welcome to Bold Live. How are you? I'm so excited to have you all here for, um, well, I'm calling this not just an anniversary show, but a fan-aversary show, because really, where would the bold and the beautiful be without all of you, our fans? That's right. Hi, I'm Casey Kasperzik, uh, your host for the next hour here on Bold Live, and I'm also a supervising producer on the show, and um, very excited to... Hang out with all of you again. This is our special time every Friday at four o'clock Pacific. And um, yeah, so we know, I don't know who's gonna stop by on today's Bold Live. It's just you and me and fans and some surprise guests that we'll talk about. Um, I, I'm seeing, I read, well, enjoying reading all your comments. I'm seeing all this uh, going by very fast. So let's do Bold Live in three, two, one, boom. I missed it. Oh my goodness, I'm just so excited. How are you doing? Hey. Hello, hello. Good. We're all in here. Excellent. Um, I see a lot of uh, you guys watched today's special episode featuring Brooke Logan and her many loves. Nobody is more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, creates, creates a division than Brooke Logan. Let me tell you, I saw a lot of comments. A lot of people love today's episode. But then there's a lot of groups that, you know, were like, why does Brooke get her own episode? Huh. <sighs> well, you know, so ha what's what happens when you're here for 35 years? And you know somebody else who's been here for 35 years is going to be our surprise guest today. Um, she was the very first Bell Phillip television production employee hired uh, back in 1986. You're like, well, the show started in 1987. No, but they had to hire office staff in 1986. And uh, she very quickly rose the ranks. And she has been a longtime uh, producer and director of The Bold and the Beautiful. And she directed today's uh, Brooke Logan episode. And she's going to come hang out with us for a little bit. So please welcome uh, Bold and Beautiful director and producer, Cynthia J. Pop. Cindy! Hi, everybody. Perfect. Thank you for uh, watching. <laughs> you look amazing. Now, you just came from the hair salon, I know. And yes, Michelle uh, Arvizu, our former uh, hairstylist. Yeah, our former very talented um, uh, hairstylist, Michelle, who uh, won multiple Emmys on our show. Uh, now she's uh, moved on to other shows. But you look great, Cindy. So it was so exciting. Uh, uh, the episode, it aired one day late. I, but it aired. Finally, yay! It was it was great to to be able to be a part of it and to shoot that, and I'm happy we're getting such uh, great feedback on it. Well, you're getting a lot of fans saying hi to you, Cindy. I mean, I know that these fans they have seen your name for 35 years. Um, what does it feel like for you to have been here for 35 years? Well. I can't believe 35 years has gone by. I'll tell you, when I first took the job, I, I thought to myself, I hope I'm making the right decision. And it's been the best decision of my life. So I'm so blessed to have been here. So what was it like in the early years when, before the show was even on TV, like anticipating what was going to happen? Um, you know, I mean, at the beginning, there were so many soaps and we were the baby. And so it's like, are we going to survive? Are we going to make it, you know, past the first year? And um, and it took so long to shoot a show, and we took so much care with it. But uh, I guess that paid off because we're still here. <laughs> there you go. And um, and but every moment along the way was exciting, and every year that went by, and as our fan base grew and grew. It was super exciting to be a part of that and know that we were reaching so many people. Now, you know what I found, Cindy? I found some pictures. I think it's these were photos. Uh, these are photos from a party that the Bells had at their home uh, right before the show premiered. And I'm going to show you there. So there, there. This I'm taking you back to 1987. That's Cindy J. Pop Big and hair. our casting director, Christy Dooley. Wasn't our casting director yet, but was working at casting. And uh, that's uh, Bill Bell, uh, William J. Bell's son. And uh, I don't know. So this, do you remember this party? 
I do. That was at the very beginning. We had such a small group of us that worked on the show. And that was um, one of the welcome parties at the very beginning so that we could get to know the Bell family and the cast could all get to know each other. And this was when we all officially kind of met as a group for the first time at the Bell home. And there's John McCook, of course, and um, the actress that, is that, that's. Uh, that's Carrie Mitchum. That's Carrie, okay, that's, that's um, Kristen. Donna. Oh, that's Donna, sorry, Donna. That's, see, that's why you're here, that you keep things straight. That's Donna, and of course, William J. Bell, and that's Cy Tomashoff, our um, production designer. Let's see, all right, right. I understand. okay. And that's a great photo. Yeah, Brian Janessy, who played Rocco, and of course, Lee Philip Bell and Ron Moss. The, oh, okay, and then, all right, I love this photo. This is in their backyard. Um, you can kind of see where mm -hmm. Cindy's bubble is. That's uh, Gary Coleman. Do you remember Gary Coleman being at this party? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Gary was a friend of Gail Kobe's, who oh. was one of our first producers. And so she he came as her guest. That's so cool. All right. And um, there's some, there's, there's our, uh, the head honcho of the Bold and Beautiful, Brad Bell. And that's Terry Ann Lynn, who played Kristen. There's Kristen. And I think that it's hard to see. I think that maybe That's Jack. That's Jack Forstel. Sure. No, it's Jack Forstel, yeah. Oh, is that Jack? Mm -hmm. Okay. Our current production designer. And then I Oh, and there's um Joanna Johnson. And Bill Glenn, the tall gentleman is Bill Glenn, and he was one of our first directors. He's the one who gave the Bold and Beautiful its look. Very, mm. very tight close-ups back in the day. Did he direct the, the premiere episode? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm he pretty did. Sure. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Bill, he used to work, I think he used to direct on Young and the Restless, and so um, he was friends with the Bells. And he came over to help start us off. All right. And then there's, there. this is like an epic, I mean, that's like the original cast photo, so to speak, of everybody from The Bold and the Beautiful. Right. Yep. Is, is Hope Smith, that's the original, like, producers, Hope Smith, Ron Weaver. That was the original cast and producing team. And <laughs> director Mike Stitch is over there behind Gail. The only person missing is Catherine Kelly Lang. She wasn't at this party. I don't see her in any pictures. <clears throat> Who's standing behind Lee? Me? That? I, I think that's Joanna. I think that's Joanna. Oh, that's Joanna. Okay. Yeah. But. Yeah, I wonder where Kelly was. And I don't I, remember. Uh, well, that's, I just wanted to take you back down memory lane there. Um. All right, and Thank also, you. so if you're just joining Bold Live, this is our amazing director, Cindy J. Pop, slash producer, slash original Bold and Beautiful um, office staff hire. So that's uh, that's cool. But you know, something that's been great about uh, being here at the Bold and Beautiful, Cindy and I have had the amazing opportunity to travel around the world. Why don't you tell our folks watching some of the awesome places that you've been able to direct? Um, I think our, our first adventure together was uh, Aspen, Colorado, and that was a beautiful, amazing shoot. And after that, we traveled to Cabo, and then Paris, Monaco, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, <laughs> back to Monaco several times. Yes. And each one was a challenge and an adventure. I mean, uh, for sure, for sure, because we don't take a lot of our a crew from the studio. We take we hire a lot of local crew. So it's it's basically Cindy and myself and the actors and the local hire local hired crew, and we put the show together. And yeah, we never know we never know how it's going to come out, but somehow, Cindy, through you persevere and you make it work. Well, you know, we always say. Bill Sr. 
in heaven is watching over us because he gives us the best weather. He gives us the best effects. When we were in Aspen, we had fog at the top of uh, Ajax Mountain and, um, and we couldn't even see. And Brad said, no, I think we should shoot. And so I, I think Heavenly Bill made the fog lift and gave us an amazing effect. The bells yep. have always had good fortune with us on location. <laughs> well, that's true. And we've traveled around the world, but we've also traveled around Los Angeles. Um, uh, if you watch today's episode, you saw a lot of those um, uh, moments from uh, Marina Del Rey with uh, Nick and Brooke. That was uh, an awesome remote that Cindy directed. Um, but also, I was just thinking about... Uh, when uh, Brooke was riding around the horse trying to get to stop Taylor and Ridge's wedding, you shot that right. one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And uh, yeah, in Malibu Canyon at um, Leo Carrillo Beach at Zuma, um, Pan Pacific Park right next door. Um, yeah, we've been all over the city. Skid Row, which is still all right. very close to our hearts, that one. That one was amazing. And that was your first Emmy for directing with Skid Row. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yes, it was. And and that was so great. I think for all of us as a show, because that was our first show um, Emmy as well. And right. um, we just learned so much um, being down on Skid Row. And... Um, it, it was a really heartfelt experience. And so that show really meant more to us than just a regular production show. It was, it was special. So I'm glad that was our first Emmy. Um, so soap goddess wanted to know if you still get a thrill about seeing your name in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, I just reconnected with somebody I hadn't talked to in 19 years because she stopped her TV and my name happened to be up there. So, uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm happy to see it. That means I'm still working. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm just thinking when I first started on the show, I remember, um, one of the first, uh, big episodes that happened when I was here was when Macy was performing at Oz and the chandelier fell down on Macy we don't know what happened to Macy. She could still be alive. We don't know. But um, so that that <laughs> now you have a face to the the name. Well, I'm I'm sure if you're super fans, you you've seen Cindy's uh, picture many times online or um, uh, in the soap magazines. But I remember that was a really really fun episode with the uh, uh, poor Macy though. That that was you know I mean for me as as I've grown as a as a director. Um, you, I learned so many things and actually one of our cameramen, um, educated me on that shoot when the, when the chandelier fell on Macy, we actually shot that in reverse and mm. she was down on the ground and we pulled the chandelier up and then we just, um, showed it in reverse when you guys saw it. So, you know, I learned, I've learned so much as a director and grown from the whole team that we have here. So, uh. It's it's teamwork, and that was a fun shoot. <laughs> well, I I know we're limited on time, Cindy, but do you have any um, you know, memories or what was like your favorite episode that uh, you've been a part of? Um. Well, I mean, I can tell you. I, I think I've mentioned the Skid Row one is close to my heart, yeah. um, and we've traveled so many different places i think action wise i love the abu dhabi and dubai shows because we had so much action in it um and i gotta say paris was amazing paris was great too with with quinn on the motorcycle Paris was i mean paris and monte carlo and i mean casey will say again things get dropped in in our laps and that um the stella maris hmm will forever be such a memory. The first time Casey and I boarded that yacht <laughs> and, um, and right. then we didn't, we didn't go to Monte Carlo. Dinner. We didn't go there to get on a yacht. It was just, no. Kathleen Kelly Lang and her mom found this yacht and changed history. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was, so, that was a memory. Uh, 
yes. But every day I get to walk into Television City, that is a thrill. You asked me about seeing my my name in the credits, just driving onto that lot and knowing that I work there is it's pretty special. So much history there. That's for sure. For sure. Um, I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of comments. People are, uh, if, if, you know, Mystic Shadow uh, is apologizing for being late. That's okay. We're glad you're here. And uh, if you are just joining in on Bold Live, I'm chatting with Cynthia J. Pop, uh, director, producer, Emmy Award, multi Emmy Award winning director, producer <laughs> for The Bold and the Beautiful and director of today's episode, uh, our 35th anniversary uh, special tribute to Brooke. Um, a lot of people are going to, you know, let me ask you a, like a, a, a business question. Like, did you always know you wanted to be a director? Yes. When, uh, when I started at Bold, um, I worked down the hall at CBS. I was a recent college graduate and I heard about this new show coming into the building and I'd gone to school for radio, television, film. And um, our first producer asked me, what's your wish list? And I said, I want to be a director. And I said, I'd like to produce too, but directing is my passion. And she said, okay, you help us set up the office and I'll set you on your path. Mm. And that's what happened. So yes, did I think I would end up in soaps in daytime? No. I never knew where my path was going to take me. I just knew I wanted to be a director. So this is where the door opened. And I've had many opportunities being on this show and because of this show. And um, and I'm grateful. But yes, I always wanted to direct. Um, and have you directed other shows? Or, or <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Um, I also had directed early on um, Passions. Um, I did a Nick at Night show called Hollywood Heights, and I directed um, a couple episodes of Frasier for NBC. And I produced my first uh, feature with Christy Dooley, our casting director, maybe someday. And uh, that we did that a few years ago. So I, Brad Bell has been fantastic letting us explore other opportunities while we've still been here. So we are very fortunate. Which, and what we are very fortunate because what, what's so great about here is it's, it's 250 episodes a year. You know, we're constantly making episodes. So it's hard to go outside and do other projects. So when some right. things come up, it's nice that we do have that flexibility, but. Our number one priority is always the bold and beautiful. That's right. That's right. Um, all right. Well, I thank you so much, Cindy, for coming. And I hope you come back You're more. Welcome. And maybe we can talk about okay. um, the next time we do a location shoot. You can talk about it. Okay. That would be good. All, all right. right. Well, have a good thank weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right. Well, that was Cindy J. Pop, director, producer, and... Um, a, a really, a, a really, I would say personal like mentor and somebody I've really um, watched and learned from over the years. So um, that's always important in any business you're in is to find a mentor or a friend. And now I'm going to keep our fan anniversary show going. And um, she asked if she could come on and interview me, and I was like, "Well, sure. Let's see where this goes." Um, she's a she's one of our super fans. Um, Please welcome Lacey to the show. Hey, Lacey. Hi, Casey. I brought my press pass. Oh, my goodness. So did you get that questions. at the fan event? Yes, I did. You got that at the fan event? And you've got your Forrester. i wearing my shirt. you got your shirts. <laughs> well, awesome. Yes, well, and I, I even yes. brought a helper to, to help celebrate in her shirt. Hi, Casey. Hey, how's See? it going? Look at you guys. You I love Betty. it. <laughs> So did you guys we really watch, tried to go all out for you? Did you watch today's show? I did. What and, did you think? Oh my goodness! <sighs> the flashbacks get me every time. It was so good. You guys did such a great job. You really did. It's so amazing, especially the the very first clip with um, Eric and Brooke, and the first clip in the oh montage. That is like from episode sixty. Okay, we're up to over eighty seven hundred episodes, but that was show sixty. And like, 
Yeah. There they are. And yeah, no, it, it, to me, it's just amazing because I watched since I was little with my great grandparents. And so during a lot of those scenes, I used to have to like cover my eyes and <laughs> try to pretend I wasn't oh. watching. <laughs> they were a little more detailed back then. So, well, you know, the, yes, the love the scenes. Networks have changed what we're allowed to um, feature in daytime. That's for sure. To do. <laughs> I yes, know. My, definitely. Because it's funny, when I would watch it with my grandma, she would cover her eyes uh, so that she'd be, she'd be embarrassed. See, and, you know, I remember they would sit behind me in their chairs, and I was on the couch kind of closest to the TV. So I don't know what they were doing, but I can just remember sitting there going like this. Like, it was just horrible. And, again, they were my great-grandparents. So Oh, great-grandparents. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my goodness. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, and so they're the ones who got me hooked, but... Since then, I've loved your show, loved everybody on it. And, you no, know, the flashbacks were just amazing today. Well, seeing, seeing young Kelly, oh, and, and John, great. I know. But and, I know and I know, and I know <laughs> you, you've, um, you, you're, you're a super fan. You've been at events. And uh, so, so it's like, yes. you know, um, you're, you're hardcore. You're, you're official. No, I was going to say, I actually need a new water. My water oh my expired. Goodness. So we'll have to get that on the next was one. Was that from the bus <laughs> tour? Yes. That was, we have I, have, I have lots of props with me right now. You do. That's amazing. My, oh, my goodness. Yeah, my lunchbox. <laughs> Wait, I have to show you. I have to show you. So you watched today's episode with uh, yeah. the clip with Brooke and Thorne? Yes. When they were in Venice? Yes. Okay. Look what Short the wardrobe hair. department found. Oh, this my gosh. Is, this is this is Brooks' coat from the Venice remote. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I didn't know we had this. Wow. She probably still can wear it too. So she probably can. <laughs> that just to remind people, I do have yeah. a picture of that. That's the that's the coat. Oh, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, that was beautiful. Right? I loved her short hair. I love her longer hair, but I loved her short hair. She could definitely pull off all looks. Um, and she's amazing. You know what? I know. The short hair is great. No, she she looked beautiful. Kelly likes now, long hair, here, but the short hair works. It does. But now I'm here to ask questions. Yes. What makes Casey tick? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous for these questions. But I, ha I have a button. Well, I, I, hope I'm not, I hope I'm not digging in too personal or anything. Oh, But that's... I do have a couple. Okay, go questions. ahead. I can't wait. <laughs> I have my. I have well, my, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. What? No, I just say I have my finger on the button that closes your window if something goes wrong. I, you know what? I'm sure you do. Yeah. <laughs> you should have your finger on the button. <laughs> well, actually, I um. Okay, you had mentioned that you went with your that you took your grandma when you were 19 to fan events. Oh, I Was took my mom. Correct? No, my mom. Or, oh, it was your mom, not yeah. your grandma. Oh yes. my gosh. Okay. Yes. So you're, you're, and you've mentioned your parents have been on the show. They're, they're, Are they? There I was in 1998. Real? The bold and beautiful family. Oh my fan gosh. I know. Baby Casey. Baby Casey. <laughs> Are they thrilled that you work on the show? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my uh, grandparents are no longer with me, but uh, my mom and my, uh, she, she watched the show. She, she was texting me. She said she loved today's show and she was crying. I, I cried too today. Yeah. I yeah. honestly, I'm a, I'm a big baby with this stuff. It's more nostalgic for me though. Like I said, because yeah. I, I started watching with my grandparents. So it's more than just a show. Yeah. But oh, oh <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So now you do the songwriting for the show. I do. Where you touch on all of your love and your heartbreak. Yes. Is there a plus one with Casey? Oh, now this is turning into, um, <laughs> I told you personal. <laughs> no, there is, there is, there is no plus one. Um, I'm um, solo right now. So where do you get your inspiration? Oh, for yeah. The songwriting. <laughs> wow. I you know it's funny you bring up my inspiration because I uh, a friend sent me. Oh, I don't have the thing, but I a friend sent me a screen grab from um, a forum chat, and uh -huh. uh, someone's not a fan of my music, so. Um, that, that I, we're not their fan. I know, well, <laughs> you know what? Everyone's a critic. Everyone's a critic. But where do I get my inspiration? I mean, I think it's through 
relationships that I've had. And, you know, really, though, I just try to, like, put myself in the um, in the in the characters on uh, hopes and Liam's like put them in there, how they're feeling. And then it, mm-hmm. it kind of all comes out. Um, it's really like, interesting. Like so Carter and Quinn, you put yourself in Carter's shoes or Quinn's shoes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that was, yeah, that was, you know. Okay, so I wrote a song for Carter and Quinn called Our Story Begins. And yes. that was the song that we played during their um, initial lovemaking montage. And <laughs> it was really, it was. I really wanted to find a, um, uh, the right tone to hit with that because you know, they were having an affair, but sometimes, I don't know. It was really, it was, it was an interesting, I didn't want it. I didn't want it to just be completely an affair. An affair. I wanted it to be something about love. And anyway, this, this is getting deep. <laughs> yeah. Not deep, not deep. Sorry. I just had to ask. Yeah. <laughs> well, so also last week you mentioned that you wrote an episode coming up in April that we, that hasn't aired yet? No, I, no, I directed, I directed part of an directed. episode. Directed, okay. Yes. So what are you like doing better, directing or producing or? Oh, oh. Do you see um, yourself writing? I would, directing? I would, I would love to direct more, but um, it's, yeah, I, it's, it's very difficult. Okay. So what I directed is uh, pretty much what we call single camera. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, it's outside the studio. What uh, Mm -hmm. they do in the studio is multi-camera, and that's very, very difficult. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not quite there, but but single camera, I love directing. Um, I love I love producing as well. um, But it is very it's very exciting to like be able to shoot something and then get in the edit bay and edit. And that's something I learned when I was in graduate school that I love to edit. because I would do a lot of documentaries and documentaries mm-hmm. are just shooting a bunch of footage and then trying to put it together to tell a story. Put it, so yeah. that's, um, so that's what I, that, so, you know, if I can do some occasionally, then it helps sort of, um, keep, keep me, um, keep that creative. Interested? No. Keep that mu- <laughs> yeah. Keep that, yeah, yeah. Keep that muscle working too. Well, and it's, I mean, obviously then they've let you kind of go different areas. Yeah. So that's show. true. You know, so. um, you know, you have to start baby steps, and if you prove yourself, then you get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. So, but yeah, I love going cool. on location with Cindy because she's an amazing director, and um, I love producing and just kind of yeah, painting the picture so Cindy can do her thing. Well, I think it's awesome, and yeah. and you do a great job. You really, really do. So yeah, well, I'm, I'm, ex- no, I'm super excited for what I directed because there's a lot of um, mm, like movie magic in it. And I want to do a whole thing about how we did the movie magic because I'm really excited. Oh, on Bold Live. On Bold Live, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, perfect. And then let me see. I'm sorry, I wrote down some questions to ask you so I'd be a little more prepared. But um, so you mentioned also your favorite scene was when Macy came back alive in Portofino. Yes. Prior. What is your least va- favorite storyline? Has there any? Has there been any that you were just like, "Oh my God, what are we doing? We cannot do this." Or, Lacey, you're going to yeah, get me in trouble. I can't, can't answer that. Oh, I'm... Okay, never mind. I suppose every <laughs> well, episode is amazing. Least favorite. <laughs> oh gosh, I mean, I don't. Gosh, I can't answer that. But um, hmm. I don't know. How about you guys? Do you guys have a least favorite episode? I'm eating cookies so I can like not yeah, answer this question. Yeah, I was going to say, did you just put that in your mouth so you didn't have to talk? <laughs> um, hmm. Well, I'll tell you what really bothers me right now. On, okay. Not out of, not of everything. That was, I was actually going to come up to this. Grace, what is going on with Grace? Why does she only appear at Forrester Creations and at Carter's house? Is there going to be more substance to this character? She right. going to stay angry? What's I think going we're going to we 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 we're building towards that. Yes, Grace will have more okay. um, coming up for sure. Do you, do you think you'll include Reese? Will he come back? Uh, he's in prison. Well, I know, but they have like early release and like 
Maybe he did good for people oh, or something. He did a bad I don't thing. Know. He did a bad thing. <laughs> I know he did a bad But see, no. that's the part of the soap opera stuff that I like. Yeah. It's all the bad stuff because it's so far-fetched. But you never know. Well, you hold, never know. well actually, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. There are stranger things that have come on the news. <laughs> and, um, oh my goodness. I, I really like the baby storyline. So that was one of my favorites. Um, I will agree. The, you... the baby best storyline was, was really, I mean, Annika and Scott, they did an amazing job with yeah. that. Thing. No. The, and Matthew, you know. All of them did. Douglas, yeah. no, <laughs> or Henry, no. Yeah. Um, no, they all did an amazing job. But really, there was a lot of um, feeling you could tell and all of that that went into it. And so I thought that I'm, was. I'm that still was a good thinking story about line. a storyline that I didn't like. I don't know. I, I'm I'm still waiting. I'm trying to think like as like as a fan before I worked here what I what I didn't like. I don't know. I thought it was a little weird. Remember when? Remember when Sheila? <laughs> kidnapped uh maggie and, and and they went to the psycho house I, yes i didn't quite understand so why they were 15. at the psycho house that was a little weird no but wasn't um matthew maybe you can help me out on that i don't know yeah that's the one to go to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um he's the one to go to now um where do you see yourself in 10 years on the show? Are you going to still be on the show? Will you be acting right on the here, show? Doing, doing bold live. Doing bold live. Bold live. <laughs> you know, I think what, what I'm going to do, uh, just a preview, after I'm going to end the show, um, I'm going to keep the show to an hour, and then I'm going to move the show to my Instagram, um, and then we can hang out on the Instagram. Oh, like in, on live? Like an after, after like show Instagram. on my Instagram. Yeah, so then we can... Hang out there. So um, I don't know. I, that would be awesome. I, I like I like doing this, um, hanging out with you guys and hosting. So we'll see we'll see where it goes. That is a very good question too. I mean, I would love to create my own show, whether it's a spinoff of the Bold and the Beautiful. Um, mm. I'd love to stay in the Bold and Beautiful family as long as I can. So you think like a soap setting is where you'd want to stay, or would you want to go to? Well, I think it's like like a, a, like a daily dead type of thing. A daily <laughs> show. Um, I I mean, I think everything is pretty much a soap opera nowadays. You know. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's either nighttime or daytime. No, but if I could have my any anything would be a game show and a heartbeat. Oh gosh, yes, yes, yeah. that would be a lot of fun. And maybe in ten years, I would love to. I would love to host um, the uh, not host. I'm not going to host it, but I'd love to produce the Oscars or some sort of award show. That's what I'd like to do too. You just, you just need to then yep. put it out. I, there. I think we need to put it out. Yeah. We need to start. We need to start something to get you up there. Then, Lacey, you're see? a very good, ho you're a very good interviewer. You're very good. Why? Thank you. Yeah. You're a very good interviewee. <laughs> have you done this before? <laughs> no, I have not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, just when my daughter brings home boys. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm now, kidding. now, what is your daughter's <laughs> name? Malia. She comes with me to the fan event. She, and you, you're both on the bus tour. Yes. Yeah, I know. I missed yes. the bus tour. I hope next year me people too. are asking, are you doing a fan event? Are you doing a fan event? <sighs> I would love it. No, well, not this year. But I know. Not this year. I know. I but, know. But, it's It's... Too much is going on, and I completely understand. There's too many people from all over that that like to come, and we got to do it safe. And yeah, and, so. and especially people traveling internationally, they need a little bit more time. Um, I just yes. want to answer a yes. fan question. Michael said, "Casey, what's yeah. the difference between a producer and a director?" Okay, well, a producer um, ha wears multiple hats in terms of, um, you know casting the show, uh, finding the locations, uh, approving crew. I mean, it's a lot about the crew um, and overall, you know, business side of it. And the director is a lot of taking over the creativeness. Um, not to say that as a producer, I don't input a lot of creatively, but different producers do different thing. But the director is really the vision and shooting and how the show is going to be shot and helping with the performance. So in a soap world, they sort of all kind of overlap, but really the director is the one in the seat calling the shots, literally. So um, that's, that's, I hope that answers your question. Um, How does the writing go though with you guys? Like, do, does, does any 
at one time does somebody come up with something kind of like, oh, wait, we can't do that now, but we'll save that for next year for so-and-so or like yeah. any kind of wild ideas or is there, well, am I putting more on it? <laughs> in terms of writing like, like a storyline or yeah. sometimes, sometimes we have the idea, oh, let's go to this place and shoot this. Well, now's not the right time to do that. Let's wait till later and we'll, we'll, we'll go to Monte Carlo and do that. But, um, uh, um, in terms of the story, you know, that's really the, I, I, I have input in the writing after it's mm -hmm. pretty much crafted and then we can mm -hmm. fine tune things. But the initial foundation that all comes from Brad, uh, Bell and uh, his co-head writer, Michael Minnis. Gotcha. Yeah. Are you team bridge or team tridge? Mm -hmm. I can't answer that question mm -hmm. because then I'm, you just, have I'm, to. I'm just going to get like, <laughs> Hate mail. <laughs> hate mail. I get lots of uh, hate mail. Um, it is a hard question. Okay. Like, cause sometimes I'm team Hope and Liam and then other times yeah. I'm Steffi and Liam. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I go back and forth and it's the same way with yes. Taylor and Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Any, but, yeah. um, well, Lacey, thank you so much for, no problem. Thank uh, you did you. an excellent um, job and I, I, I think you should come back. I want to come back. Yes. Anytime you'll have me, I'm here. And uh, maybe next time we have a performer from the show as well. That would be awesome. Who's your favorite actor <laughs> on the show or actor or actress? Oh, my gosh. Well, you know what? I really love Catherine Kelly Lang. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm not the whole uh, Tridge Bridge type of person anyways. I really just love the show. And so I kind of go with, like how you said, the whatever's kind of going on with the couple yeah. or, you know, whatever. And, um, and John McCook, oh my God, when I met him at the fan event, oh, <laughs> it was like heaven sent to me. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I don't even know. I don't even know if I could speak correctly. I know I started to like sweat really bad and I was just like, oh, it was literally crazy. So I would have to say John and Kelly, the OGs of the show were my favorites. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. No. Can't go wrong no, with that. No, no, no. But I really love the recast of Taylor with Krista. I love the recrash, recast. She's doing excellent. Um, I was very nervous about that because I really liked Hunter. Mm -hmm. She was beautiful since I was little. Just She was just so pretty and just, just beautiful, her character. And so um, when you recast, I was nervous, but I just love Krista. I think she's doing an excellent job. So... Mm -hmm. Yes, good job. <laughs> well, that's why I want to have a fan event so you can all, you know, meet the new the new people and, and meet Krista and yeah. meet a lot of new people. We but I, we would love one. So even if it's another drive through thing, I'm there. All right, yeah, yes, that was whatever, fun. whatever it takes. I, I I'm there. <laughs> you got it. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for being thank a you, fan Casey. for 35 yes, years. Thank you for talking to me. I appreciate you so much and love the show and. Yeah, keep watching. You do love the show because you 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 recalled a lot of stuff. So thank you for watching. Oh my god, and thank you. All right, <laughs> Thanks, have a good Lacey. weekend. Bye, bye bye. All right, well, thank you, Lacey. That was fun. I felt like I was in the hot seat there, and um, I'm just waiting for our next fan anniversary fan to join our show. I just sent the link out to you. We'll see you in a little bit. Um, Okay, I'm going to read some of your questions here. And you're wondering, oh, am I am, am I going to open the, the phone line? I don't know. Should I open the phone line? Let's see if anybody's there. I doubt anybody's there. Um, well, there's three people there. Okay, let's see who's there. Hello, welcome to Bold Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? We call the live Um, This is Gina Simonette calling. And... Um, I'm from Frankfurt, New York. Yes, Gina from Frankfurt. Welcome to our Bold Life anniversary. Oh, it's so great. I'm so excited. This is wonderful. Um, I do have a question. Yes. Um, my question is, um, I kind of miss um, Soul. I think his name was his name Saul. And um, uh, he was with Sally Spectrum. When he died, I kind of got sad. Yes, and, um, Michael Fox. He played yeah, Saul. I, yep. I got, oh. So I got kind of sad and I missed him. So, but, um, and I like the part with the, um, 
olive. That was really good. But the olive, when Ridge went to the olive tree and picked up, um, uh, you really? know, the olive and gave it to Brooke. Really? And you Puglia, remember that? And Puglia, when they're in the olive groves. Yes, I do. In fact, I was you looking at that? some photos today and I came across a photo from that shoot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when we were watching, me and Jim, because we couldn't wait to watch it, um, he asked who a couple people were, and I told him who they were because he's never watched from way back. But um, as the super fan said, uh, I watched mine with my grandparents. So then I just started watching it at home. And But I'm the one that started it first. They were watching Young and Restless. Okay. But I, I, after a while, I didn't like that. But I have to say there's nothing that I don't like about um, Bold and the Beautiful at all. There's not an episode that I don't like. And I have to say, Douglas, for a little boy, he's doing a great job. And you are too. So oh. I want to thank you for taking my call. Oh, well, Gina, thank you for calling. And I have to agree That's with you right. too. There's not an episode I don't like. So I like it all. <laughs> we're like, all right, Gina, you have a great night. Thank you for calling. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Australia, uh, probably our biggest fan in Australia, I don't know, probably the, one of the top 10 in the world, um, he, he's, he's going by the nickname uh, Sherlock Marco. Please welcome Marco. Hello. Hey, Casey. How Hello. are you? Good. How are you? Now, did you get a chance to see uh, Brooke's episode? I did. I did. It was and, awesome. And did you, was that a, was that a, like a trip down memory lane? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, I, I just didn't know what to expect. I didn't know which part, like I knew yeah. the five guys would be on it and um, but I didn't really know which one would leap out most at me. And surprisingly it was Nick cause, mm -hmm. um, he wasn't like my favorite pairings with Brooke, but oh. I found his moment with the, the blinding lights and the sound of the, the boat and everything was just amazing. So that put a huge grin on my face. I know there's so, so many, um, uh, classic moments that happened on that shady marlin you know <laughs> yes i can't actually see you but i'll i'll just pretend i can <laughs> oh you can't see me yeah i can see myself in the window oh. but oh i um, see you yeah oh well that's the main thing i guess okay yeah i we know what see you, you. Like. We, everyone sees you um uh, oh, uh um you know and we probably would have brought the shady marlin back but it's uh was destroyed years ago <laughs> had to make room for it uh in our yeah. storage unfortunately um and i don't know don't know how you would have fit it in brooks lounge yeah i don't i don't know you know we there was a like yeah there was a one concept where we wanted to like have brooke um like go since it was sort of like a, a dream to go through different doors and it would take her in different parts of the bold and beautiful world but we ultimately we settled on just having it be right there in Brooke's living room. Yeah. That um, was, that yeah. was a beautiful, beautiful episode. Um, and All, almost brought a tear to my eye. It takes right. a lot to make me cry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what episode has made you cry? Um, uh, the standout is when the original Caroline died. Like I was <laughs> sobbing, like I was literally sobbing because I loved Caroline. Um, and in hindsight, watching them again on YouTube, I've changed my perspective on Caroline. I, I think she was a bit snooty. And I didn't I didn't pick up on that the first time round. I was a lot younger too, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sort of worldly wise now. But yeah, the build up to her dying and um Pete Ridge finding out and getting the charm, you know, him giving her the charm bracelet with all the little charms of all the, the moments that they would have had and uh, her realising that he knew she was dying. And then obviously when they had the, the big farewell and, and you know, Caroline obviously tweaked that everybody knew and was saying goodbye. And then, yeah, when she died in his arms, I'm just like a mess. And yeah. I had it on VC, I had it on videotape, so I just watched it over and over. It was just, just brilliant. Uh, um, 
and I was a little bit, I was a little too young for Ridge and Caroline, but when I like started getting to know the fans, they would always say their favorite moment was um, the charm bracelet, like the charm bracelet, the charm bracelet, like that's their favorite. Yeah. And if you um, uh, haven't ever seen that, I need to figure out, I need to give you what episode number that is to look up, but that was that is an iconic scene between Ridge and Caroline. Yeah. Huge, huge yeah. moment coming soon to YouTube. There you go. I'm, I'm trying to think what moment. I mean, there's been moments that brought tears to my eyes, but it's like it just goes by so fast. I mean, 35 years, 8,700 yeah. episodes. Yeah. I think, um, like, obviously, the, the Beth, the Beth storyline, um, you know, I was all I'm, I'm a huge Hope fan. And so. I was all for, you know, Hope finally and, and Liam getting their daughter back. But funnily enough, I was um, moved more by Steffi, like by Steffi by Beth oh. being taken from. Like all along I felt oh, wow. they were both victims. They were, do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I felt really torn because Steffi, um, Steffi lost a child too. So, um, yeah, that made me cry. <laughs> that also made me cry. That that is a very um, uh, that was the hard part of it, right? Because they right, yeah. It's the, um, Beth had bonded with her mother, or was Steph, who she thought was her mother, and then she had to go. Yeah, mm. that was very that was very hard. Um, I'm a, I was I thought you were going when you said Steffi. I thought the episode where she um, came to the realization that she was addicted to opioids. Uh, I thought those were incredible scenes and i remember helping to put her emmy reel together and watching it all cut together and yeah i called her I, I, and i said um jackie you're gonna win an emmy this is the most amazing um, seeing those scenes all put together and um she had just uh given birth uh to her second child when i when i um when i called her and uh but she she she's like that's the best news and she did go on to win so that was pretty powerful yeah incredible um, all right. So Marco, um, we're getting closer. So I don't want, I don't, I don't necessarily, I, I'm sure you have some theories and, um, and I, and I, and if you, if you're not following Marco on Twitter, what are, <laughs> what are, what are you, what are you doing at all? You know, so exactly what, what, what happened to Twitter though? You had to change your account. Yeah. Oh God. Long story. I clicked, I Gosh, I can't even remember now. It was it was almost like I got it was like you know sometimes you have people that follow you and you um and it shows you their likes and I go and click on someone's like and it says I'm it's it's I'm too like young for it or something or or I need to approve I need oh, to prove I my age to look oh. at it and so I just typed in a fake date of birth. And it, oh, it basically oh. said that uh, I was too young when I opened Twitter in 2009. Okay. And so I then had to go through this process of re-identifying myself. And I didn't want to show my signature on my ID because I thought it's too much information. Anyway, long story. But, yeah, basically I just said I'll stuff it. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, it, I got suspended and for not proving who I was. And um, so I just created a new account <laughs> well so what is your current account uh so it uh, uh it's well i think you have to find me by my at so it's at marco m-a-r-c-o then v my middle initial and then my surname capiello c-a-double-p-i-e-double-l-o but the the okay. handle is sort of marco polo there you go so give them a follow and now you are sort of suspect that there's going to be a uh an alternate reality or a dream yeah like well you have to admit the word dream has come up like a lot so it could like now i'm starting to think this is the writers messing with us and they want us to think it's a dream because it's like it's it's like for me it's like hitting us over the head with it that it's a dream. It's a dream. Steffi says it. Sheila has said it. Brooke has said it. Mm. 
you know, and, you know, then Brooke, Brooke, uh, Brooke goes and has a dream in the anniversary. And I'm like, is this a dream within a dream? And it's true. who's having the dream? And how far back does the dream go? So, yeah, I'm not saying it's an alternate reality. I just sort of felt like if it's a dream, then it means yeah. someone's dreaming, someone's dreaming. And therefore, what we're seeing is not real. And then how far back did that go? It would be fun to think before. about that. Like, what what would be, uh, if it was a dream, like, how would things, mm -hmm. change? you know, that would be fun to think about. Yeah, it's what, what would have happened instead. Because obviously the life still goes on for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, like, I hope I'm wrong because I really want to be shocked. Well, I don't, I don't care if you're wrong or right. I just think I appreciate you being such a super fan and just like you have such a positivity about you where it, you hit the right note where sometimes, you know, you're a fan of the show and you enjoy it and you show it. Whereas sometimes some fans, I don't know if you're a fan of the show with the way you comment. Yeah. It's yeah. I think, yeah. There's like, you know what, right this week is a huge celebration and um, do you know what I mean? Like I, I can understand there are some there are some views out there that, you know, everybody should have been included. But, you know, it's an eight, it's at the end of the day, it's 18 minutes of TV mm -hmm. and, you know, and this is, you know, Catherine Kelly Lang has been there since day one. And so, and she's done the most episodes by far, you know, right. probably no one has a chance of catching up to her, um, you know, so let's celebrate the woman. She's busted a gut for 35 years to, you know, uh, bring us some amazing TV and whether you love her or love to hate her, right? Um, you know, love to hate the character, you know, don't. What what I dislike on, right. on social media is people mixing things, you know, real with real and confusing the two. And you know what? All these people, they are not who they are on TV. They're different people in real life. So, you know, grow up, people, if right. you fall into that, if you fall into that sort of, you know, pattern right. of thinking. And, and, yeah, have, that's and, my, just, and have fun. That's Enjoy my, it. Enjoy it. Exactly. It's just a TV show. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. Love, but I, love I them. Mean, hate I, them. I just didn't realize how polarizing Brooke Logan is for people. I mean, it's yeah, a I'm, Brooke is a trigger word for people. Yeah, but it's, it's strange. I think, I don't know. It's almost like in real life it's a bit different when you talk to people, you know, your friends and family who watch it, and then you come on social media and it's, it's almost like, whoa, it's so such a contrast. So, but then I don't know it's who you who you mix with. Like, I've got no idea. So, but anyway, I, I think people shouldn't confuse the two. Let's, you know, just enjoy it. Yeah. And you know, and celeb and celebrate it. This is a celebratory right. week, you know. Seeing Susan Flannery, that's all part of the celebration. Do you know yeah, what and I mean? I, like and I, and and I'm not saying, oh, you can't be critical or you can't be negative. Like, I like criticism. I like to see comments. I like people to, you know, it, it, you know, this is your show, please. But, but I just being, being mean spirited is, is, yeah. is, is yeah. a disappointment. Be kind. Be kind. Right. But you do it. You, you, these, these, these are real people. These are real people. And, and that's true some too. Of them do, yeah. Some of them do see your comments and if you're aiming to hurt them, well, you know, you, you haven't because they've probably heard it all before, but just be kind, you know, it doesn't hurt to be kind. Yeah. But I would say follow Marco. Marco is a good example of, you know, you don't like everything. You don't, you know, no. you, have, you have your, you have your, 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 uh, Absolutely. Your comment. Yeah. You know, but it's, but it, but at least you get, the, and it's fun to have, get the dis, debate going and the discussion going and talking about different things. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, not, not every era or month on the show is, is as wonderful to me as others, but at the end of the day, I love the show in general. So, you know, I'll always love the show. I was 18 when I started. So, well, I was minus 
I was minus two or something when I started. There you go. I was <laughs> so, going to say, I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, that doesn't seem possible. Well, um, Marco, yeah, I'm 53. You. I'm 53. No way. No way. No, we're, we're, yeah. no, you're, we're ageless in the bold and beautiful world. We're ageless. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, Brooke is only, you know, like, I don't know, 50. You know, well, they said I was so, when she's, you know, Eric and Brooke said it had been 35 years. I'm like, hang on a minute. Huh. Isn't Rick like 40 now? <laughs> you know, older than 40. How's this possible? But, you know. Right. It's a, but, it's know, like, it's a time, time warp. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Alternate right. reality. <laughs> well, having you on Bold Live has been a dream, Marco. I really thank you for being here. It's been a dream of mine too. Thank you, there Casey. You and um, I hope to see you. Real, we'll, we'll chat in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. All right. Take care. All right. Bye, Marco. Bye, everybody. See ya. All right. Well, that was Marco for you guys. Um, he's, he, he's just a super fan from Australia. I don't know, Marcus might fight me on that, but I, I think Marco may be the number one fan. Um, two people who are big fans. We're going to keep this fan anniversary going. I know the show's gone by really fast. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I try to read your comments and I see this and that and that, da, 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 da. there's a lot going on. But now I'm going to bring in our super fans from the U.S., Candice and Matt. Candace and Matt. Hey, how hey, are you guys? Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a minute. How you been? Um, I've been very brave, bold, and beautiful. Uh oh, what does that say? I can't read it. I am brave, bold, oh, you are brave, and beautiful. Bold and beautiful. Oh, is that on a is that on a notepad? No, this is literally so. Um, as everybody knows, I'm a childcare teacher, and there we had is. a conference. And we literally had to pick cards up as icebreaker to explain the term. I literally, no joke, picked this. That's I picked this. I had to explain. And I was like, well, uh, <laughs> I started laughing. You, I was like, there it is, folks. If this doesn't, this isn't me. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't escape the bold and the beautiful. <laughs> I know. I know. So now, Candice, you did you see today's show yet? Yes. And Matt, you saw it. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Um, what were was it? Was it? Was it all you'd hoped it to be? Did you wish for more? Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I I can't complain because I was so happy to you know see Brooke and Nick again and um, <laughs> see Windsor back as Thorn. But yes, of course, I would love. I would have loved a whole week where it was one guy every every day. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, you know me. I could I could watch Bricky forever. So <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate it because again, it was the history of Brooke's loves. Um, and yeah, seeing you know. Let and I mean, love. I will say, yeah. I, you know me, I I love a lot of Brooke's pairings other than Brooke with Ridge, but actually having Unforgettable at the end really I just know. like brought back like, it made me feel like when you were younger watching the show, you know, like, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I used to get played so much, that was that was their thing. So to actually like have that, um, it, it invoked more emotion from me than I normally would uh, feel with Brooke and Ridge dancing. So. Oh, I mean, but, but did you see? Did you see Bill though? Like, I mean, I love all of them, but Bill. Look, I'm not. Look, here's the thing, Don Diamond. Yes, I, I, the yes. And the yes, only thing missing yes. was he didn't neigh at her. I was, I, I was. <laughs> yeah. We needed a stallion line in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I also love too, when you think about it, it was Brooke's dream. Right. So whatever he was saying is what she's thinking. So when he was saying like, Wait. oh, you, you didn't judge me or, you know, want to change Wait, me. Like was that was kind of like shading Katie, like in her head. Yeah, that was, that was a little crazy. <laughs> I love that. I was like, she's kind of shading Katie uh, right uh, here. Because... Hold up. Wait a minute. He was talking. Cause all I was doing was looking my eyes. <laughs> I was just like here. I was like, yes. Ma chérie. Yeah. Ma chérie. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> 
but it was fun and i mean that's so cool that you th- that you guys still have the coat from venice and stuff like it was I so don't great to see that look that was i cool. also have something else let me find like, hold on oh <laughs> okay you know she also has the people magazine in back too i'm just saying <laughs> oh did you get did you get did you get I, the? I'm getting. I'm actually getting that later. <laughs> but also, wait a minute. Hold up. We should just be plugging stuff. We also should put <laughs> this too. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's David's okay. book. Uh huh. Yes. David's the moderator. Oh, where are we? Oh, hey. Okay. So, yeah. sorry. This is. This is the. Okay, Wardrobe brought this up. This is what Brooke wore on the horse when she fell off, on her way. <laughs> On her way to on say, trigger? Hold, hold it right there, she Padre. Felt, yes, trigger. Trigger, That's yeah. Trigger. This yeah. fell into the dirt. This was her her top that she was wearing. I, I it, it fell off the hanger, so I screwed that up. But then Aww. this was Brooke's dress from uh the the island when she when Thomas and Brooke split hey, the Oh yes. The island with the berries. Yes, the berries. <laughs> How did I remember that outfit? But can't that look? I'm I don't know. Wardrobe brought I, this up. I'm like, this is going to be perfect for the Brook Museum. No, wait. You know, with with the Barry storyline, there were so many special effects. Did you work on all that stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Casey. Yes. Well, because I what another thing I really loved about that storyline was when you guys recreated like Taylor was hallucinating, and so yes. she was seeing Ridge, but it was still her in the present. That was, oh, I, I, lo- I loved that story. Yeah, that, <laughs> we really went for it with that one where we recreated St. Thomas and- um, Yes. With the, oh, we yeah. used the original footage, but the current Taylor with Hunter. Yeah, it was yeah. like, and oh, Hunter it was really such a cool- it. it was really good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, That's- <laughs> well, so, you know what? You can use that same sort of thing now if you need to recreate, you know, Tridge flashbacks. Um. Yeah, you know, just like you know. <laughs> yeah, and I know, and I know a lot of people. You know, right? It's 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 a look. It's just us fans. You know, it's it's hard to think about the 35th anniversary and Brooklyn All Her Loves without you know Ron Moss, right? Like there, True. I said. It. I said it. You know True. what I mean? Like it's I'm, like we everybody. A lot of people were saying that on social media. They was like, they should have had Ron Moss, you know, come on, pop up, or something like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be honest. If you really, I mean, this is not a dig at Thorsten, you know, and everything yeah. else. Him, but when you do think about the 35 years, yeah, I mean, Ron was was there, the beginning of Brooke and Ridge. Ron was there. So to you know, I, I got there, but then I was like, you know, it's just from the head, from the back of the head, just to you know, you the know, block they're it, just it's, the block it. um, growing, grow, growing up, you see, you know, it's it's a broken ridge, and you know, Kathleen Kelly Lang and Ron Moss, and you know, we celebrate them, but we, but Torsten K is Ridge, and so yes. we we um we honor that, but um. You know, I don't. I, I, I don't. Help. I don't we want people to think we don't appreciate yeah. Ron Moss. It's just this is this is how yeah, it is. It's the, I mean, life life goes <laughs> on, and so do we. And yeah. we're honoring the characters and the couple. And no matter who has played these roles, I mean, of course, we all are connected to these actors because we've seen them for so long. But we're honoring the cup the couple. You know, and that's that's the thing. Yeah. Um, well, and thankfully yeah. now, I mean, we can relive all of Ron's episodes on this channel. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's yeah. just like can... you know, we um, Krista Allen plays Taylor. Does that mean Hunter Tylo's moments as Taylor we can't celebrate? Right. Of course. I, I mean, she defined that character, and but now oh, we right. we the character lives on through Krista. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Hope. Hope. Same thing. Yep. I mean. You know, that's it. I mean, with Katie and Donna and Thomas, you know, Thomas. <laughs> Pat, so many Thomases. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sorry. I didn't even laugh at that, but then I thought about it. I was like, yeah, there's. I, I actually had to think about this because I always say, like, you guys, obviously, you guys have gone to fan events. Oh. I have yet to go to a fan event next year, right? Next year, Casey, right? Next year, fan 20, event. 2023. 
That's the year, baby. I will be there. But I was looking through my photo album and I was like, I don't think I met everybody before they came on Bold and Beautiful, like Lawrence and, you know, Colin and all of them. And I was looking, I was like, wait, I did meet somebody from Bold. I actually did meet a Thomas. I met Drew Tyler Bell. Oh. So technically I've met, see, there you go. While so, so I did meet somebody from Bolt while he was on Bolt. There you go, folks. <laughs> that made me feel feel important. <laughs> Where did you meet Drew Tyler Bell? I met him 2005 at the St. Jude event in New York. 2005. Wow. Long time yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Found the picture and everything. I'll send, it, I'll send it to you. Well, Matt, I have to ask you this question. Is there somebody in the Bold and Beautiful world that you never met like the one person um, you wish you could have met like like that's currently on or you mean no just in the history of the show oh um well i was fortunate enough to to meet so many people including uh susan flannery um but yeah. i mean i definitely i would of course have loved to have met darlene um mm. Or Bill Bell himself. You never met her at the um, fan event? You never saw Darlene? Darlene, no, because I, 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 back when I was a lot younger, I wanted to come to the fan events, but like school would have already started. Oh, so, okay. like, since I didn't get to start coming until I, I graduated, I didn't, um, gotcha. I didn't get a chance to meet her, sadly. But, uh, yeah, I would have loved to have met her. I mean, as far as other people, I've still I've never met Bobby or Jennifer Finnegan. Um, okay, I would I would love to have, to meet them someday. Hopefully. You know, yeah. But, um, okay, it's funny you bring that up because it's like um, when we have our fan events, and you know this, we always have the current cast members at the fan event. But like, I'm a fan. I'd love to have what I call like bold gold. Okay, and so you can have those people. You can invite Bobby. Yeah, there's like those invite, classic, like yeah. I mean, Macy was such a Trusty Mel Choir. Like, like you can invite other people that are part of yeah. the universe and have a, a second event. I call them bold. I would love that. I think, I think <laughs> I should do that next year. Start the ball rolling, so that way you know some of us yeah. who are going to be there. For the who who, who wants summer. to go to Bold Gold? Right there, you go. <laughs> Um, I know, I and you brought up Susan Flannery. Okay, I may have like put the horse before the cart. Is that or the cart before the horse? Yeah, because you gotta have yeah. the horse before. The, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> Stephanie would probably slap me for chicken. being ridiculous. Anyway, Susan, Susan will be here at some point. She just has a scheduling thing. We're gonna figure it out. But so it's 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 like what happened will... to Susan? She's coming. She's coming. Okay, <laughs> it'll, it'll be it'll be good. Well, we we are anxiously waiting, but we will wait for yes. Susan for sure. <laughs> okay, so then looking at the week ahead on air. Okay, um, like the strap well, in. And wait, did we oh. talk about? Did, did we talk about? We got to see uh, Brooke <laughs> Stephanie flashback this week. Yes. Oh, um, yes. that's a highlight. Can we? <laughs> I I yeah. love that. I've always loved that scene. Yes. That's right before Brooke and Deacon end up getting together. That whole kind of story is what prompted that. Um, so I I just I loved that. Would we it got be to wrong just that. to air that whole episode? Uh, uh, please, please, please right. go ahead. Please, it was do. like I tried to get every deliciousness <laughs> out of that episode. <clears throat> like basically, the script <laughs> came in and it and it had said different moments of Stephanie and Brooke through the years, like, you know, it originally scripted to when she throws her in the trash can or calls her the whore <laughs> of Beverly Hills and things like that. But then when I was really looking at the show, it, it needed more of like Stephanie from beyond talking to her and not, not all those comic moments. I mean, that would be a different. Yeah. Show. Instead of just reliving it, it was like, it, yeah, it, she was, she was That's saying what she would be saying to her. Mm -hmm. If she was there right now. Yeah. 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 It, it, and it's just like, Oh, Brooke, she never learns, you know, it's like the same, the same, same old thing. But gosh, yeah, Stephanie Brooke moments. We could have had our a 35th anniversary with just Stephanie Brooke moments would have been amazing. I was waiting for that to pop up on the YouTube channel. Like the Nin 19 minutes would moment. not be enough. Uh. So that's why you have to have a list of all like the slapping things. montage alone would be like half the episode. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. 
Can we can can you guys do a playlist and put it up on here for like the best slap moments? Anything for you, like, Candace. Anything for you. Really? Anything? Don't say that. <laughs> we'll, we'll premiere it at Bold Gold. We're gonna premiere it at Bold Gold. Um, and then and then you also had uh, Sheila Brooke moments. I think that uh, aired a few episodes prior. Uh, mm -hmm. From that I, history, that I love. Yeah, I love any Sheila Brooke interaction. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love, yeah, because we got the we got the flashbacks of that too. That was so, oh, I love seeing that. Um, they used to be cool, but now they're not. <laughs> well, you know, but the thing I love is if you analyze it, it's like they were kind of just using each other because Stephanie was a common enemy. Sure. And, um, you know, Sheila had no hesitation holding Brooke at gunpoint at her goodbye party and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, or I saw one clip on YouTube recently where like Brooke was pregnant with Bridget. Um, she like passed out and then Sheila was about to inject her with something that was going to cause her to have a miscarriage, but then got stopped because Stephanie walks in. <laughs> so oh, it was just oh. like that. That's not, um, I don't know that Sheila was ever a real friend to her, but. <laughs> yeah, no. It's sort of like now, which was Sheila and Taylor. Well, the common enemy is kind of sort of Brooke. Would you say? I mean, it's kind of weird. It's like, deja vu all over again when i see sheila and taylor and i'm like um y'all got brooke okay brooke is the common denominator right here like hmm, is history about to repeat itself i don't know that's one of my theories <clears throat> well, well i just gotta say um i'm gonna have to wrap up the show but i couldn't have had this uh b and b 35th anniversary without you two here and um, oh, make, sure, you. make sure you get your popcorn popped and you're ready for uh, this week ahead. Still celebrating. As long I got as we, some cake. Oh, my God. I have, I have. As long as we don't have any it's, special reports, um, this is going to be. I know. This is, where, oh, this is the week. I'm just going to say that yesterday. I mean, oh. I understand, you know, the world doesn't stop. I, I no. understand. Yeah. When I say that the bold and the beautiful social media. Okay, it was trending. Bowling and was trending because everybody was like, seriously, of all times, like you couldn't wait till like four, nine o'clock at night. No, you had to do it now. Yeah. At <laughs> least now we know, like, I, I don't know about everyone else, but back in VHS days, like the worst thing ever was when you got home, and it didn't record. rewound the VHS. Oh, that we're sitting down, ready to watch Bowling and Beautiful. And then it wasn't on, but you didn't realize that it hadn't been on. Uh, or it was just local news covering it, but then you had no Paramount Plus to watch later. So Right. Um, right. <laughs> well, at least it was a full preemption. All right, well, bye. So not half the country saw yeah. it. You know, like, it was a full preemption. And But we're, fingers crossed, no, no preemptions next week. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to say this, uh, Casey, and I'm going to speak on behalf of the uh, Bold and Beautiful uh, social media fandom. Everybody's on pins and needles. Everybody's on pins and needles to find out what this twist is that's coming. Well, and I know and you can't say anything because you already said too much. Yeah. Well, and guess, and guess yeah, what? Uh, Bold Live is going to go on. We're, we're on hiatus here at the Bold and the Beautiful starting oh, no. about an hour ago. <laughs> so Bold Live, um, I'm going to be on hiatus no. for the next couple of weeks. So <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be lay, lay, being lay, lay low. <laughs> oh my gosh! Are there are there gonna be people with picket signs outside of CBS? Oh my god! I don't no, know. I no, know. no, we'll be no, no, no. Um, but it, um, but uh, <laughs> Okay, so so okay, so we just got that call. I know. So I'm sorry to tell you guys on our. Uh, today, but uh, yeah, I, I I will be on hiatus. That's the breaking news, folks. That's the breaking news. Call your friends and let uh, them is, know. This is, this is actually this is our season two finale, actually. Um, and I'll be back, um, you know, after Easter on uh, oh, Earth Day, April twenty second. Looks like. Oh my my. That's TV such so. Uh, that's such a long ways away. Oh, wait, that, wait, that can't be. Wait, no, really. That's too. That is too. That's long. like a whole month. <laughs> That's all, David, moderator David. We may need to. Oh, you know what? I didn't even. Oh, we need. We may need to. We'll figure it out. But I. Yeah. But I, 
I don't know. Yeah, let's just, see. Let's play it by ear. Keep, watch our fools, watch, the, watch our social media. We, let's see what we could do. Okay. But I don't have a show Ooh. scheduled next week because here's the deal. It's April Fools. No, well, <laughs> no, but but also the our um, our performers are on on hiatus. They're unavailable. They're not here working, so it makes it more difficult to um, to schedule all that. And I know you guys like talking to the actors, so I don't. I don't. Well, we like also talking to the people behind the scenes. I, like I'm really like Cynthia. Oh my gosh, that was I love Cynthia. Well, they're they're on hiatus too, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. True. So. Um, <laughs> But there'll be a lot for you guys to chat about. Um, I just, just. Oh yeah. Go <laughs> live on April twenty second. Will be two hours because whatever goes down, <laughs> if it happens during this time frame, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot to talk about. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Well, Matt, Candice, <laughs> thank you so much. It was good seeing you guys. Thanks. And happy um, anniversary. We'll happy catch anniversary. Up. Happy what? anniversary. Thank you guys. Talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. Um, yeah. Delicate hosting duties. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, um, what can I say? Okay. I see a lot of you are uh, asking questions. I, uh, I'll try to answer your questions. Um, I can do... Hey, thank you, Michael. Nick, thank you guys for all your comments. Mandy, I'm kind of doing my own fan roll call. Um Weatherly, Ronald, Bold Beautiful, AU, Jenna, Donna. Uh, what did I, what did, Donna, what did you say? Oh, Donna, keep watching. I didn't say exactly when. Kathleen. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. Smile. Olivia. Rosemary, Kurt. Hey, Kurt. Which documentaries did you make? <laughs> well, I made, yeah. I, well, I made a documentary called um, Becoming Bold and Beautiful, which was about our location shoot in Monte Carlo. We need to put that on our YouTube channel. Um, Angie, no anniversary speeches? I know. Well, Jennifer, great show today. It was exciting. The Bold and the Beautiful or Bold Live? Mona, thank you, Mona, for being here. It wouldn't be, I wouldn't be Bold Live without you, Mona. I miss it when you're not here. Lacey, I want, Lacey, thank you for coming on. Cindy J. Pop, thank you for coming on. Uh, Matt, Candice, and Marco, I love you guys. Um, Susan, Kyle, Kyle, my favorite location. Cabo, <laughs> because they have, um, well, tequila, and <laughs> but Cabo was pretty pretty fantastic because of the resort. Uh, I have to say, uh, but here's the deal about going on location. Uh, I, I the problem is I don't really get to enjoy it because I'm 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 working, and I always say, well, I want to come back here sometime when I'm not working so I can enjoy it. And then after I'm done working there, I'm like, I never want to come back to this place. This I this I do not want to come back to this place. But no, I do. If I could go any place, I'd love to go back to Paris. Um, just such a happy, happy city. It was so so much fun. Um, and and I let's see, choo choo choo. <laughs> um, hello, Antonio. Hey, Dwight. Nathan. Thank you, David. Colleen, hi. All right, and if you're new to new to Bold Live, welcome. I should have said that. You know, thank you for coming in. Hey, Mandy, thank you. How long do you tape a day when on location? Oh, that's a good question. Um, early morning until the sun, till we lose the sun, pretty much. Um, as we try to, it's all all day. Um, it's funny though when we're shooting in Monte Carlo, we shoot early morning, and then we have to wrap at a certain time because the actors need to get back to the hotel, change, and then go to a party because that's why they're there to attend these parties. And uh, it's like, we're, we're like, they've got to leave now. They got to go to the party uh, to meet the prince. It's a very, it's a very surreal thing when we're in Monte Carlo. Um, yeah, Susan, don't forget to hit like. Is there a like button? Oh, I never even look at the likes. 
I never even look at the likes. I look at the comments. I look at all your comments. Um, hi, Ronald, Marco, uh, Mad Madame, and Theodore. Hello from the Netherlands. Soap Place. Michael. Oh, you're, you're very kind. Thank you. Hey, Rebecca. Um, Trey, did Catherine and Kimberlyn ever have a cat fight? Not that I know of. I, I, they, they had some choice words, but I don't think they ever had a cat fight. Uh, the beach scenes? What are you saying? Oh, when he gets his memory back. Yes, Tammy, those were that was pretty powerful when Liam got his memory back. Um, oh, cat fighting the foundry. Yeah, that was more of like a big fight. But they did, they did, there were other people there. I would think of a cat fight like one on one, but yeah, that was like a big old, um, uh, so okay, I'll, I'll give that to you. I'll give that, I'll give you that to you guys as a cat fight. When Don is coming back to Bold Live, let me know. Okay, I'll let you know. I'll let you know, Kenneth. Um, Rebecca, if I weren't a producer, what would I be? I don't know. I'd probably be work in the uh, theme park industry. I think I'd be working at a theme park. I, I I just like to entertain. Not as an entertainer, but as like an executive for a theme park. Um, oh, thank you, Cheryl. I, I enjoy all of you, and I enjoy hanging out, and I like to give you as much kind of like inside tidbits as I can. Um, but... Um, I'm going to try something new out. I'm going to wrap up our bold live today by just saying thank you all for being fans and your support over the years. And um, let's keep it going. And I'm going to try something new. I'm going to go um, to my Instagram and do a live. I don't normally do a live. I'm not really comfortable with those. But I thought, heck, that might be fun to do and um, can just talk about whatever else we want to talk about. So I'm going to go over to my Instagram. I'm at Casey Cass. And for the next, I don't know, 10 minutes, I'm just going to see who shows up on the live. And um, maybe some of you will be there and um, you can join in and we can talk on, on, on Instagram. So did you see that? I'm going to play that again for you in case you missed it. Um, that's where you can follow me on my handles or you can follow me because then you'll know if we get preempted what's going to happen to the show like it did this week. So those, that's where you can follow me um, at Casey Cass. Yeah, I would. So don't be shy. If you want to join in and chat with me, um, let's talk on Instagram. But I'm going to do that for like 10 minutes. Try it out. Uh, dip my toe in that water. But uh, again, thank you guys all for being here. And um, like I said, we'll be back in about three weeks. Um, and then we'll have lots, lots and lots to talk about uh, then for sure. But until then, boom, got to hit that button. I was having a problem with my little button there. There we go. Um, we're going to close out today's show, and I'm going to remind you to be bold, be beautiful. Don't be back next week, but be back. Just come back. I don't have another graphic to say, like, be back in three weeks. So that, that was that. But thank you, guys. Appreciate you all being here. So that's it? That's it, Katie.